I'm going to show you how to create data validation in Excel and also how to create a joke on your friend like this. This applies to text, dates, numbers, and generally how to avoid errors in Excel. So let's get started. My name is David Benayim and I make tons of videos on Excel, Zoom, Teams, Power BI, PowerPoint, all of your business applications. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you like this content. So let's look at this list. So I have a consultant column and I have a consultant list over here. Now what I can do is I can go to this text column and I want to avoid people being able to give errors like these two that are similarly spelt but are not the same thing. So what I can do is I can select these cells, go to the data tab and choose data validation here. You might see the icon like this if you have an older version of Excel allow a list and the source i'm going to do it like that and i'm going to just keep one blank and i'll show you why in a sec press ok and then i have here the consultant column and people can see it like that but they can also start typing it and if they get it right great if they don't then they get the error so why did i leave a blank let me add two new people so I'm going to add myself and then now what you'll notice is in the drop down list, David is the last one. Ben is not there. And that is because I finished my drop down list there. In order to fix that, I have to go back to data validation and change the named range. So I tend to advise to add some blanks at the end. Not too many. If you have too many, then you get a long list like that but just enough for it to sort of allow you to auto expand. The other thing I tend to recommend is that people sort it from A to Z. So to do that, go to data and then just click that button and then get it sorted like that. So if I have dates, I want people to stop writing something like this. In fact, if you try and use this in a formula, the formula will break. This is a formula that references the number of days between today and that date. And you can see that that's broken and this is broken. The other thing I want to avoid is dates that are before, say, August 2015. So what I can do is I can go to the date column and I can go to data and then data validation again. And I can say this needs to be a date that is between two dates. Um, greater than means after a certain date, less than or equal to means on or before. So I can say greater than and say 31 of July 2015. I recommend writing it like this because this will work whether you're in the UK or Australia or America. As long as it's English speaking country, this will work regardless of whether you use day, month, year or month, day, year. Now it is stopping me from entering 6th of June. It's stopping me from entering Monday 5th or next Monday, something that Excel treats as a text value and not as a date value. Plus it also stops me from entering 7th of Jan 2014 because that is before the dates that I said. But 6th of July 2019 is fine. So uh, if you want to get these dates showing in the way that I showed you, quick tip is use the shortcut Control Shift 3 and that will give it you in this context, which is why I think is the best way to do the dates. Next, we have some numbers. So numbers come in handy because here we have supposedly a total of 1800, but that includes 1000 and 6000 here. So the formula is clearly wrong. It comes wrong because this is a negative and this is a negative that derives from it. You can't have a price column, a negative and a price column. So force the user to enter a positive in the price column. To do that, let's select both of these and we can go to data validation. We can say this is either a whole number or a decimal. 
say decimal because price can be a decimal and let's say greater than or equal to zero press ok and then you stop people typing in a negative number although i've applied data validation on existing data um, it's not actually shown me that there are some errors so if i want to see the errors what i can do is i can click on this drop down and choose circle invalid data so these are very clearly the errors so as long as i fix these so let's make this 6th of jan 2020 that is going to remove that this i'm going to get rid of the minus sign and that works now if you choose the right one from a drop down list for some reason the uh, shading doesn't go away but if you click back here it refreshes and that goes away so that is a way to use data validation to detect existing errors you can also clear validation circles to remove those what i will say is that data validation works a lot best if you create it before the person starts typing it but if the person's already typed you can do it and adjust it there in fact that allows you to go to something like this where i have put in data validation and i have here 3400 rows of data circle invalid data now allows me to very quickly scroll down and see where the errors are so there's a really really good thing you can do after the data is already there So I've entered now those different types of validation. Some other ones you can do are a time and text length. I rarely use this. Text length can be useful if you're looking at, for example, a six digit product code or something like that. And custom means you can write in your own custom formulas. You can also edit the error alert message. So if I click on apply these changes to other cells with the same settings, this is highly useful when you want to clear the data validation or when you want to edit it. Maybe this becomes greater than. And I'm going to go to error alert and this is where I can customize my error message. Press OK. And then as soon as someone types in the wrong thing, they get that error message there. So uh, when you're editing it, it is important to rely on this thing. The input message I don't tend to use. What I do instead is have these column instructions at the top of the list. For many people, data validation in Excel is a nice to have. For me, it is the basis of how I do all my data input sheets. When people use Excel to be a database then they need to apply database principles and databases force you to define a data type for every column and give it parameters if it's text if it's drop downs if it's numbers if it's dates between numbers etc so um what i tend to do is i create column instructions like this and i actively decide every column is it going to be a drop down list is it going to be a free type cell is it going to be a formula and then i create instructions here and show people how to do it so um i'm going to clear the formatting here this is a tool not many people know of clear formats love it and then i type these in here and then what i do is i select them I go to conditional formatting and I choose highlight cell rules, text that contains a really, really useful feature that's unfortunately hidden away. So anything with the word choose is validated and that's going to be yellow. OK, go there again. And then free type is going to be green. And then go there again. And then formula is going to be in red. Same I often do with fixed when it's one, two, three, four, five, etc. So now these are dynamic because this is conditionally format the cell if it contains a certain number of text. So if this doesn't contain the text anymore, it goes away. If it says formula here, it goes red because it now contains the word formula. So uh, that is how you can create these rules for the columns.
Let's say you want to apply data validation to other cells below. There's a couple of ways you can do that. So here I have my drop down list. I could just drag it down with an empty one that will take the format and the validation. Or a more robust method is to select some cells. You can do this on multiple columns and then you can just copy them, then go in the columns below. And then if you go to pay special, you can choose validation. It will keep everything else intact, but only paste the validation like that. So one thing with data validation that is really annoying is that it's very, very easy to break. So over here, someone has actually done something. So this is not validated, even though these are, uh, they can very easily break from copy and paste. So I can, for example, copy this, paste it over here, and then I can type in whatever I want there. So copy and paste is unfortunately a way to break data validation. So in order to check whether it's broken, here's a really, really useful tool. If you go to the home tab, you have find and select and you can choose go to special and data validation, press okay. And there you can very clearly see that the data validation has broken for all of these. Now it's pretty easy to fix this using the method I just showed you. Just select them, copy, and then go down here and paste special data validation. And then you can fix it like that. The other thing that's useful to do is you can select a cell and go to use go to special data validation and same, and it will select all the cells in the worksheet that have the same validation, even if they're not right next to each other. GoToSpecial is really, really useful for some other reasons. For example, if you have some formula inconsistencies, you can select a column, go to go to special, and then choose column differences. And then it will pre-select the cells that have hard-coded values where there should be formulas or anything that is a different formula to the norm like that one there. So a really, really useful tool in that. Also, Go to special conditional formats. You have all and same. All will jump to these ones that I've pre-selected there. Remove data validation. What you can do is just select certain cells and then data, data validation. You tend to get an error that looks like this. Selection contains one or more erase and continue. Or it might say, do you want to extend to the other selected cells? Press OK. But anyway, just press clear all and then it will do that for you. Another useful one if you're going to do that is select apply changes to all other cells with the same settings before you do any editing or any clearing there. So if you like this video, then please let me know by clicking the like button and consider subscribing if you want more content on Excel, PowerPoint, Word, uh, Teams, Zoom, Google Sheets, Power BI, etc., etc. Thanks for watching.